Welcome to Lesson 7 of Chapter 5, Finding the Part. This lesson focuses on um, how you can determine if you know the whole thing and you know what percent of the whole thing you want to find, how you can find that, that part. And actually this lesson uh, lays the, the groundwork for 5.8, 5.9, 5.10. So it may take a little bit longer, but that'll make the next three a little bit shorter. There are two methods that are widely accepted in finding a missing part of a percentage equation. To find a percent, part, or whole, you can either write an equation or you can use a proportion. Or use a proportion, either one. So if you're going to write a, an equation, you have to do some translating, and there are certain keywords that often, but not always, but most of the time, do appear in a sentence that explains the, uh, the conditions of the problem. So when you're translating a written sentence into an equation, you can associate words and symbols in the following way. If you have something like what number, pick a letter, it's commonly we pick N. When you see the word is, use an equal sign. And when you see of, it almost always means multiply. This is not standing for the variable X, it's standing for the symbol of multiplication. So I'm going to go ahead and erase these, but you got to get the, these three things will make it much easier to write an equation. What number, think of N, is is equal, and of is multiply. So we're just going to go ahead and practice a couple, or I'll show you how you work with you, using both methods. If we had the statement or the question, what is 80% of 125? We want to write an equation for this. It doesn't say what number, but it could say what number is 80% of 125. So we're just going to translate this into an equation. So for this part, we say n. For this word is, we use equals. For 80%, I could write 80%, I will this time. Of uh, means times, and then the number 125. We have to um, convert this to a decimal number, which we studied in the last section. This would be 0 0.80, but I don't have to put that second zero, times 125. And it's just arithmetic from here on. 8 times 125 is 1,000, but we'd, we'd have to move the decimal over one place to account for that. That's something you might have to just do pencil and paper, but this is how we demonstrate that we get 100. So 80% of 125 is 100. It's not necessary to have the decimal and the zero, but you can keep it there. And then you should ask, is that reasonable? And it certainly is. 80% of 100 is 80. 80% 80 of 125 would be a little bit more. The second way to do, what I'm going to do is show you both ways side by side on three or four different problems. The second method, you use the proportion that when you compare the part of something to the whole thing, that's equal to, to the percent. It's often said the percent is the comparison of part of something to the whole thing. So if you're shooting free throws and you make 15 out of 20, 15 is the part that you made out of the 20 that you took, you would say that 15 compares to 20 the way my percent n does to 100, because percent means out of 100. So we can just say, for percent, we could also substitute n over 100, and now you should recognize that you have a proportion. And if you know three of these numbers, you can figure out the one that's missing. If you only have two of them, you really can't do anything with it. But we will have three, if we look at this question, what is 80% of 125? Now, although you only see two numbers there, and I just told you there are three, you might be able to figure out what's the one that's really not shown here. Um, and it would be related to percent, being, meaning out of 100. So 80% means 80 out of 100. Now, here's another pretty big idea to make this easy. The number that appears after the word of is almost always, I want to say always, but I hate to say always because if you find one time it's not true, is always the whole thing, or almost always the whole thing. So when you see of 125, that 125 is going to be the whole thing, and we don't know the part. So we're going to solve the, the proportion n to 125, the part to the whole, is equal to 80%. I'm afraid I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to recopy this. this. I'll put it up here. N to 125 is the same as 80 to 100. 
And I'll work to solve it from here. So when we cross multiply, we get 100 times n equals 80 times 125. And actually on this one, because of the way the numbers work out, it might be easier to do 80 times 125 first. Well, let's do this. 90 zero up in there. 8 times 125 is 1,000. And then we can divide it by 10. And there it is, it's 100, which is what we got the first time. So n is equal to 100. That cancels. And so that's example number one using both equations. And the fact that part of whole equals percent. So let's look at one that looks a little more intimidating. What is a tenth of a percent of 250? So this is going to be a little bit tricky because we have to work with that decimal, and we're going to have that decimal per uh, percent, and we're going to have to convert that to an actual decimal number. So this is going to be the n. This is equals. 8 tenths of a percent is going to be, move the decimal two places to the left and drop the percent sign. Remember how that works? So if it starts here, we go two places to the left, then we go there. Of means multiply, and there's our 250. Uh, four, 200, 4 times 250 makes 1,000, so 8 times 250 would make 2,000. And it has to have, move the decimal three places to the left. So I think that n equals 2. 8 tenths of a percent of 250, does that make sense that it would be 2? 1% of 100 is 1. This is close to 1%. And we have two and a half hundreds here. So that's a reasonable answer. Certainly is reasonable enough. I'm quite sure it's right. So let's look at how we would do it if we use the part to whole idea. So we're going to say the part, which we don't know the part. We'll just use n for that. After of is 250, so that's going to be the whole thing. This is the part to the whole. And the percent is 8 tenths of a percent. That's out of 100, because percent means out of 100. So it's this number, don't move the decimal, out of 100. So we cross multiply and get 100n equals 8 tenths. My decimal meter times 250. Divide both by 100. I can knock a zero off. There's a little tricky working with these decimals, that's for sure. But we can just follow through. We know we can divide both those by 100. I can divide 5 into 10 and get 2, and 5 into 25 and get 5. And then I get um, 8 times 5 is 40, so 8 tenths times 5 would be 4.0. Divided by 2. And fortunately, I get the same answer, which you should happen if my arithmetic was good. I get the same answer using the part to whole equals percent as I did when I used the equation method. So we'll get one more example. And then you can kind of look at this a couple of times. Try, you know, pause the video, work through them again on your own so you can follow the steps. Let's try 12.5% of 160 is what number? So the wording in this one is, is turned around a little bit. And that's okay. You have to be able to kind of generalize the idea and apply it to different way, the ways that a problem could be worded, or you might have to word the problem yourself. So we have the 12.5% of, it's going to be 12.5%. I need to move the decimal two places to the left and make that 125 hundredths, thousandths of is times 160 equals what number? So I'd have to do 160 times 0 0.125, 0, 0, 5 times 6 is 30, 5 times 1 plus 3, and x is 0 here, then 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 1 plus 1 gives me 3. Annex 2 zeros. 1 times 0 is 0. 6, 1. 0, 0, 10, 10, 2, 3 decimal places. 20. 
which is a good answer because I, I worked this ahead of time, so I know the answer is 20. And let's prove that with uh, part to whole. i just back it up. Doing part to whole. Okay, so we have of is followed by 160, but it's going to go here where the whole thing goes. 12.5% um, percent means out of 100. And then what we don't know is the part. So we would say 100 times our missing number equals 160 times 12.5. Now this should look familiar because we had to do that. That's when we got our uh, 2000 or something like that. Divide by 100, divide by 100. We can knock a zero off of here and off of here. Um, different ways you can go here. You can go ahead and do 16 times 12.5. And divide that by 10. That would be pretty easy to do because it's very easy to divide by 10. We just have to shift the decimal in place. So I would probably say, just looking at the combination of numbers here, I want to just go ahead and multiply here and then shift the decimal in place. So um, I'm going to do it a little different way here and do, no, yeah, yeah, I can have, no, sorry for my hesitancy. I'm going to do this 12.5 times 16, 30, uh, 12, and 16. Fifteen seven. You double check. I did that pretty quick. Twelve fifteen. Yeah, I think so. Index is zero. Five two one. Here ten. Oh, this is looking good. And then the decimal goes here. So this product would be two hundred. And two hundred divided by ten. Gives me 20. Yay, got the same answer. N equals 20. And should get the same answer unless I made an arithmetic mistake. So that's an overview of the two methods. You can either use equations or you can use the part to whole equals percent, which is using proportions to solve for the missing part.